Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends, and welcome to another video with your host, Andrew. So you join me on what is, again, another wet and quite a dark morning here in the UK. I do plan on getting myself um, a light in the future to hopefully aid with these videos. I do have a, a light upstairs, but it's quite cumbersome, so I'm trying to get into something a little bit more uh, discreet. So uh, that will come in future videos, and it'll also give me the ability to maybe shoot in the evenings as well. Um, Certainly in the winter time, uh, the, the light is getting darker and it's making recording a little bit more challenging. Um, anyway, so what's the uh, actual content for today? Well, as you can probably guess from the title, we're going to be doing a little bit of a Christmas guide um, shopping list today. And we're also going to be looking at some pen comparisons. So uh, we're going to look at some pocketable pens and slimline pens and just have a look and see what you can actually get for your money. They're all quite roughly in the same um, price bracket. so. Yeah, it'll be interesting to have a look at those as well. Anyways, let's roll those titles and uh, get on with the rest of the video. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna be doing a little overview of some of the uh, items which we have got on offer for your thoughts for Christmas. Um, I know obviously we're getting quite close to Christmas and I appreciate that most of you will have probably actually made your Christmas presents um, shopping lists and gone out and purchased. But for those that have yet to go out to um, buy some Christmas presents or you've got a, a work secret Santa with a penabled um, fountain pen lover, then I've got some uh, quite nice items for your consideration. Okay, so we'll start off with some inks, then we'll go on to doing some papers, we'll do some pens, and then I've got a couple of um, pen pouches to show you as well at the end. And then after that, we'll do some pen comparisons between some slim pocket to all size pens, which I thought would be quite a nice little double whammy today of uh, fountain pen goodness. So let's start off with probably the most obvious choice, the Diamine Inkvent, Inkvent Calendar, um, Diamine Jack Frost. That was quite a mouthful, that was. But it is really actually just uh, the, the Jack Frost. And this is a uh, Shimmer and Sheen ink. And it really is absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, if I hold the bottle there, you can see quite a lot of silver particles. Now, if you pair that up with um, a really good paper like Tomori River, you will have a fantastic experience with this ink. Uh, it will show off all those properties um, absolutely wonderfully. So, one just um, precaution. Uh, if you are quite new to uh, fountain pen inks, uh, the Shimmer and Sheen inks, as beautiful as they are, they can be a pain in the ass to uh, clean out. So my recommendations would be that if you are considering something like this, you put it into either an inexpensive pen or a pen which you can easily um, disassemble or flash out. So anything from Pelican in the M range would be um, a, a really good choice. Uh, you can unscrew the, the nib units on there. Um, so. I'm not going to do it on this one, but you'll be seeing this pen later on in the review. This is one of the easiest pens to actually clean out. So yeah, certainly Pelican is a, a recommended manufacturer or a cartridge converter pen. Uh, again, they're relatively easy to um, disassemble. Right, so the next ink is Diamine Ancient Copper. Now I know this is more of an autumnal ink, um, but the inks which I'm choosing aren't necessarily themed to Christmas, um, with the exception of Diamine Jack Frost, but just inks which I've um, thoroughly enjoyed throughout the year, and I think that maybe that you guys might want to consider. Ancient Copper really is a, a beautiful, beautiful ink. And when paired onto a paper which has got like a creamy sort of uh, look to it, it really is absolutely beautiful. You've got some really nice sort of shading qualities and it, it's just absolutely yummy, to be quite honest. It gives really nice rich colours. It's very invocative of autumn. And it really is just a quite a special ink. And one which will certainly be replaced when it's being used. Uh, I have used this for artistic purposes and I thoroughly enjoy it. Now I'm not going to do ink samples with this video because I have got um, links to some, the actual video reviews which I've done before and also there are some really good guides out there which I'll try and link you to as well. So I'll link you to Diamine's um, website and you can maybe um, peruse some of their selection. Now I'm not saying that these are the only inks which you should choose for Christmas, I will put that out as a disclaimer, but just inks which I have um, personally found throughout the year that I've um, thoroughly enjoyed. Now the last one 
um, which I've got, which is probably one of my most recent purchases, is the Sailor Manio ink, and this is the Nadashiko, and this is a Kurima ink. Uh, now, what do I mean by a Kurima ink? Well, to those which are not necessarily into the fountain pen world or are new to it, a Kurima ink is a ink which can show off a number of different colours. So in this one, we have got predominantly blues, but when paired it with a certain nib type, on a certain paper, you will also start seeing purples in there as well. And it is absolutely breathtaking. Um, it's one of my, well, it is my first Krimer ink, which I've bought, but um, my friend Adventure Denali, she has got quite a number of Sailor inks. Uh, so if you want to go and check out some of her videos, if you're curious to see some more of that, then please do so. Again, uh, link in the description below. And I will also be doing, hopefully, a collaboration video with her with a Pelican M600 red tortoise shell um, in the future, where we're hopefully going to, fingers crossed, <laughs> cross fingers, uh, we're going to try and do a, a collaborative video where we will try and actually share some experiences with the pen um, but in just one video. So how it's going to work out is going to be interesting. So watch out for that one. Okay, so on to papers next. So first paper up is the Pebble Stationery Company Sakura Limited Edition. I think it's a limited edition or a special edition. This is a beautiful, beautiful paper. Um, I wish this was a hardback uh, rather than cardboard, but I love the, the motifs on the front of this. It's just beautiful with the, the gold foil and the Sakura petals, which are just sort of gently cascading down. Now, I'm a sucker for um, cherry blossoms. I really am. I think they're just absolutely glorious. And yeah, every time um, spring comes around, I always try and book myself a visit to Kingston Lacey, which is a National Trust property um, quite close to me, where they've got a Japanese garden and a wonderful assortment of cherry blossoms. Now, why to earn this paper uh, in particular? Well, it shows off the properties of an ink like no other, to be honest. I'm not saying that there's no other paper to try, but if you really want to see the actual qualities of an ink, there isn't really much better than Tomori River paper, in my personal opinion. Um, I'll hold this page up, and as you can see, it really does show off the, the qualities of this, um, I think it's Jack Frost, yeah. Oh, how fortuitous was that? <laughs> yeah, it really does show off the qualities of um, Jack Frost. Uh, it's it's spectacular, it really is. You can see all the sheening, the shading, and the shimmering um, on this paper. And whilst it is a little bit more expensive than regular paper, if you are trying to see what your ink samples are, I can't really reiterate this enough. It really is absolutely fantastic. Okay, so next up um, is a Leuchtturm. Um, now I have got, again, a review of this on my channel, and I will confess I'm not necessarily a diary person, but I'm giving it a try, and I won't hold this close up because there's a lot of personal thoughts, but it really is absolutely um, a wonderful, wonderful diary. And it's, it's some quite clever little things in here as well, so if I think it's in the back, yeah, there's a, like a little envelope in the back where you can sort of store things in, like stickers and other bits of um, stationery in there as well. But what I like is the freedom of this um, paper. It's simply a, a, a date at the top, and you've got no sort of separations, nothing too complex, and it's wonderful. And it does come with um, stickers as well, so you can actually uh, attach that to the front uh, to label what year it is and anything else which you might um, particularly want. There's also an inbuilt um, bookmark with ribbon, and you can also put the elastic around the front, which obviously stops it from opening up, which is very nice. Um, there are other diaries which you might want to consider. Um, again, I don't have a huge selection, but what I'm trying to do is just show off the things which I've bought, which I thought might be interesting. I have actually bought my aunt a Hobonichi this year, which I was actually tempted to keep for myself, but. No, I am trying to spread the, the joy of fountain pen paper to people around the world and hopefully they'll enjoy it. So, next up, we're going to have a look at some pens. And I'm going to choose a cheap pen, a mid-range pen, and a slightly more expensive pen. Um, I don't know what people's budgets are for Christmas and how much people spend, but if you're like me and you don't necessarily want to spend a lot of money, um, these three pens are, I would say, 
within the range of buying a loved one a pen, um, buying a friend a pen, and if you're really on a budget, then we've got some um, something here for you. So, first pen I'm going to hold up is a Lamy Safari. Yeah, I know it's a generic Lamy Safari, but really there isn't really any better pen in this price bracket which will actually perform any better, to be honest. Uh, they are absolutely fantastic. And as a beginner pen, if you're trying to introduce someone to the phantom pen world, it does come with a triangular grip. So it does train people to hold the pen correctly. And I was actually having a word with um, Katrina from Santini, um, asking about what content you would like to see on my channel. And she said, people holding fountain pens. So this is gonna double up, okay? Lamy Safari, absolutely fantastic. Triangular grip, nib is easy to take out and disassemble. It's a cartridge converter. Now I don't have a cartridge grip in here. Um, this one is actually for sale at the moment. And it really is a wonderful, wonderful pen. Now there are other um, fantastic pens in this price range, but none which really beats um, this pen in terms of its simplicity and uh, nib options. So the wonderful thing with this is, if you do want to upgrade to a gold nib, you can. It costs you around about 90 pounds, but you can get yourself a gold nib and put on a Lamy Safari. So it's a really customizable pen. And as you can see, I've done one of my paintings on there as well. Stepping up, we've got the Narwhal School Keel in Chroma Teal. And what I love about this pen is, again, it's very inexpensive. And I bought this from Scritura Elegante in Holland. And I've got another one of these coming, hopefully, very soon. Um, I've got the shipping notification at last. Uh, so what do I like about this pen? Simple, it's a piston filler, decent clip, nice colors, decent ink capacity, and wait for it, 50 pounds. Yeah, that's right, 50 pounds for a, essentially a piston filled pen, good ink window, so you can see the ink sloshing around, and a really good um, nib. It's buttery smooth, it performs well, and that's all I can really say about it, to be honest. It's a really, really beautiful pen. For £50, you're really not gonna get too much better than this. Um, yes, there are other manufacturers, and I'm sure in the comments you can probably suggest some other pens at £50 which you would recommend, but if you're trying to look for a more interesting filling mechanism, then there's not really gonna be much which beats this. Okay, so next stop, we have got a Leonardo Messenger in Caramel. And this is wonderful. Now this is going into the um, PAR 100 region and it is an absolutely beautiful pen. Uh, the material on here is fantastic. It is a hand-turned pen and whilst the actual writing experience isn't going to really differ between the other two um, writing uh, instruments, what you are getting, as I say, is a piece of more of a, not necessarily bespoke, but from a smaller company where they're actually doing things by hand rather than mass um, producing. And it really is a, a sublime pen. Now, Leonardo do have other pens in the range which you might want to consider, but if this is still available, it comes with a cartridge converter, a number six size nib, and this is a Yovo nib. And again, you get a gorgeous color and hand turned. So. You're getting quite a lot of, um, for your money here, to be honest. Um, having something which is handcrafted is always going to add on uh, the pounds, unfortunately. Um, well, not necessarily unfortunately, but maybe for your wallet. But the plus side is that you know that you've bought something and you supported an independent artisan. So that might be up for your consideration. Now the last two things, now I'm not suggesting that you go out and buy yourself a Nakaya, unless you're super rich, but you can buy these pen pouches and they are absolutely gorgeous. So you're getting yourself um, Japanese kimono silk um, for around about 35 euros. Now that is quite expensive, I will grant you, um, or 35 pounds I should say, but it really is beautiful. Uh, you get a nice little toggle on here. Um, it's a single pen pouch, the gold sort of diamond patterns in here are absolutely beautiful and it's gonna keep your Arushi pens really safe. Uh, so if you are into Arushi pens and you wanna get um, yourself or a loved one something, then yeah, consider this. 
Uh, next off is another um, pen pouch from a lady, I believe, by the name of Anne Steele. Um, I will again put the link to her shop below. I believe she's still going. Um, this is, a, again, another pen pouch. So, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Um, this has got a dragon motif. It's a two pen pen pouch. And if I unopen this, in fact, actually, I'll unopen the other one in a moment so you can see the inside. You get really good, adequate storage in here. Now I've got two big pens in here. I've got a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in Arco. Certainly not necessarily a Christmas present which you would consider buying another person, especially if you're a fountain pen lover. You'd probably find it very hard to give that away. But I digress. It's really nicely um, constructed. It's very well padded on the inside and it is going to keep your pens um, protected. So certainly something to consider there. Uh, so let's just show you very quickly the inside of the Nakaya. As you can see, it's got a really generous um, flap on here. It goes down and then it ties around. So it's really, really super, super um, protected there. But you've got a really nice uh, yellow insert here and it will fit any pen of um, any size in here uh, from Nakaya's range. So if you want to put in a um, cigar portable 17 millimeter, then it will fit it um, because you've got that really generous flap which you can then just fold over the top. So that is the Christmas recommendations. We'll now move on to doing the pen comparisons uh, for slim and pocket pens and then we will finalize the video. Okay ladies and gentlemen, so we've got three pens here today which you might want to consider for um, purchase. So we have got a Pelican M200 limited edition or in the gold swirls. We've got a Shown Design Pocket 6 in Cinnamon Tsunamigashi, and we've got a Sailor Pro Gear Slim in the Fairy Tales Vega finish. And they're all absolutely beautiful, beautiful pens, these are. Um, absolutely stunning. And they are all roughly in the same price point, certainly from the recommenders, uh, recommended retail value um, perspective. I bought this pen for just shy of £100. This one retailed for around about £116, and this one goes for around about £150-£160, depending on where you buy it from. So, let's start off with the Pelican, and then we'll move on. So what are you are getting for um, about £100? The reason why I didn't put this into my comparison uh, list uh, for the Christmas presents earlier was purely because I wanted to focus on this one now. But this might be something you want to consider giving a loved one. Uh, you can get a Pelican M200 for around about £80, um, £70 if you're really lucky. And you can even look at them used for around about £60 to £70. They actually hold their value pretty, pretty well. And in fact, some of them, they will actually go up in price, um, depending on the popularity. So what are we getting here? We're getting a, a German-made fountain pen um, with beautiful appointments. We've got a fantastic finial on the top with the pelican with the uh, single baby chick. We've got a really nice um, pelican-shaped um, bill clip. Absolutely beautiful. And then we're getting this really nice um, gold swirl, which is semi-translucent, so you can see the ink um, sloshing on the inside. Uh, there is an ink window on here as well, as you can see. Um, and under certain lights, you can see the ink far more effectively. Now, I'm not gonna do any writing samples with these pens today, because I have got writing samples of each of these pens. But I just really wanted to do a comparison between these three. But most of all, you've got Pelican's proprietary piston filler. Absolutely fantastic. Um, what is fantastic about this is it's basically a double piston on the inside. Well, not it's not two pistons, but it's got two lots of spirals on the inside, which means that when you're actually um, twisting the actual piston knob, it actually um, fills up extremely quickly. Um, with traditional um, fountain pen piston systems, what you do end up getting is a lot of turning. A lot, a lot of turning, but with this, it's absolutely fantastic. You also get about a three quarters of a turn to take the cap off, so it's really quick. And you also get a really ingenious little system on here. Um, there is a slight step up here um, from the actual piston onto the main body, and it's, it makes for posting this pen absolutely effortless. And not only that, I can turn this around to, the heart's, to my heart's content, and it's not gonna turn the piston knob. Um, unfortunately, for a lot of piston pens which I've had in the past, you can't do that. So, something really worth considering. Also, 
Uh, the nib on here is absolutely fantastic. It's a little bit bouncy as well for um, a steel nib and possibly um, more bouncier than the, the gold nibs um, from Pelican's range with the exception of the M1000. Um, by no means are these flex pens but if you want to get a little bit of expression out of your lines, then this might be something which you want to consider. Okay, next pen up is the Shone Design Pocket 6 uh, in Cinnamon Sumonagashi. And as you can see, this pen is absolutely tiny. It really is. It's beautiful you know, from this um, Sumonagashi uh, finish on here, which is essentially you just dip the paint, sorry, the pen into like some suspended paint on top of water, and you dip it out, and that's what you get. So Simonagashi is basically the, the technique which we're referring to. But what is really awesome about this is the nib. This is a number six um, Yovo nib on oh, such a small pen. It is comically small. But when you actually put the actual screw cap onto the end of the barrel, you get a decent sized fountain pen. As you can see, I'm holding this in my hand. We've got a nice um, hourglass section on here and it really is a very comfortable pen to hold. Yes, it's a steel section um, and some people don't like metal sections, but you can get um, sections from Shown Design with uh, ridges, which makes uh, for a much more uh, comfortable gripping experience. But I've never had any issues um, actually using this pen on a daily basis. I've got medium sized hands and I absolutely love, 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 love this pen. The only disadvantage might be for those who like um, cartridge converters, but what you can do is you can basically unscrew the barrel. You've got a cartridge in there which you can quite easily fill up with a syringe and you get a really decent ink capacity at the same time. Now, another nice little touch here, which um, Ian has considered, on the inside of the cap is a little rubber O-ring and you simply just um, have that installed in there and it's gonna stop the pen from drying out. Really nice little simple touch. Overall, um, for about 116 pounds in the UK, you're getting an absolutely fantastic pen. And I bought mine from Izzards. So go and check out Roy's um, shop. Um, he also has some new pens on offer. And if you go and check out his Instagram feed, which I'll also link you to, he's got his first um, actual branded pen, which has come out, uh, well, this week. So yeah, go and check that out. Lastly, what we have is the first gold nib pen in this sort of price bracket. And this is the Slit Sailor Pro Gear Slim in the fairy tale Vega finish. And again, it's absolutely fantastic. The appointments on here are really nice. Um, this is injection molded like the Pelican M200, but the actual material is really, really beautiful. And on the barrel and the cap, you cannot see any seams whatsoever. However, you take these uh, actual cap off, you can actually feel where the injection molding is on the actual section. It's a bit of a shame, but you do get a 14 karat gold nib. And I think this is either a number four or number five size nib, but it really is absolutely fantastic. And I bought this for art purposes for drawing. And I have to say, this is perhaps my favorite nib. Um, it's a medium fine nib and it really is beautiful. Okay, so what have we got underneath? We have got, Another cartridge converter. This is a proprietary cartridge converter from Sailor and it holds a relatively decent sized um, amount of ink. If you want to see what these capacities are, I do have videos um, for that as well. So that is it really for the overview today. I hope that has um, proved useful and maybe even some of these um, pocketable slim size pens might actually be something you want to consider. They really are absolutely fantastic pens and um, I hope that uh, I get to see you next week. So if you've enjoyed this content, um, please do consider subscribing and liking and leave a comment about what you'd like to see in the future. Uh, till next video, I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.